r slash ask reddit what is a dirty business tactic that you know and everyone should be aware of it people lie about salary starting pay raises etc all the time learn to play hardball for a multi-million dollar company another ten dollars 20k is nothing my office had a lockdown on raises over 3% and going into an annual review I learned that my boss had lied and underpaid me for the starting position. He claimed they had a $60k budget for the position and couldn't exceed it. I found out the last person in the job got paid $75k. So I got an offer from a competitor for over double my current pay. Knew they couldn't afford to lose me with the amount of work coming in. And slid my offer letter over to my boss during the review. They matched the offer. Gave me a $10,000 bonus up front. And even cut me into a percentage of a business line. The meeting was awkward as hell. And it was difficult to do. But it's business. Fake claims of another house offer with zero contingencies. We were young. First time home buyers. We found a house that we loved and was in our price range. Albeit the high end of our range. But in there. Nonetheless. We entered into negotiations with the seller's agent. While my husband and I were thinking the counter offer over. We received another call from our agent saying the seller's agent received an offer from someone with no contingencies. They could pay cash and sign that day. We knew we couldn't complete with that and our agent urged us to rush over to her office to sign their counter offer and hope they would accept it since we made our offer first. Of course they accepted. Because there was no other offer. After all this went down. We were sharing our story with family and friends and we came to realize the seller's agency plays this card frequently. I wish my husband and I had been in a better place to fight their tactics. But we were buying in a location that didn't have many good houses in our price range. Two years later. And we are pleased with our home, just not our mortgage. Always. Always. Always count every single note when exchanging currency. It's so easy for vendors, particularly smaller ones, to short bills from a stack of 100 or 1000 and claim innocence when, if, called out on it. But at Home Depot and Lowe's there are cacti with plastic flowers glued onto them. If you ever get a demonstration of a service from a company they will always use their very best. Most experienced staff but once you've signed up you might find you've got the dregs that they couldn't foist on anyone else working for you. I worked in the collections department of Discover Card for a while. One thing they did, maybe still do, to lure customers to them is offer 0% APR for the first year. People would jump on this and transfer all their debt onto their new Discover Card. And then the company would conveniently not send the first month's bill. In the fine print of the agreement, it states that if you miss even one payment in that first year, your APR will jump to 29.95%. Half of my calls were to these new customers who would then proceed to throw a fit. Because they didn't ever get the bill. And I had to explain to them that it was their job to know when the bill was due. And sending one was just a courtesy extended by the company. I hated 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 that job. It ate away at my soul. Petco will sell you non-aquatic plants specifically for your aquarium that will poison everything in the tank. Debt collectors will have detectives call you from a number that appears to be a legitimate law enforcement agency when you google it. It's actually a spoofed caller ID using a legitimate agency's fax number. The detective will threaten the rest and throw around names of local judges. The debt collector will claim to not know the detective who left the message. But will be willing to take care of your debt. Edit time. Yes. It's illegal. But it's very hard to prove and that's why they do it. Law enforcement or courts will only call you in the case of theft, like a hot check, but will never call for an old debt. It's civil and they don't have jurisdiction. In Nova Scotia, Canada severance pay is paid on the average of your last 30 days of pay. This means that some companies will actually reduce your hours to minimum your last month with them if they are going to lay you off. Happened to me wife. She worked for this company for 5 years. Worked 35 plus hours per week. Suddenly she wasn't getting shifts. Boom. Layoff notice. Happened to other folks too. When I was in the process of moving into my current home I transferred the title of my old home and land to my sister because she was buying it and moving in when I left. 
Within the next few weeks she started getting all the welcome to the neighborhood coupons and flyers. She didn't even change her address. So I assume companies track title changes with the register of deeds. The sketchiest was a pest control company claiming to have an existing account on the property and recommending she continue to use their services. They detailed dates and changes. Reference termites. It was all lies. All the dates shown were while I owned the property and I never even heard of this company before she received that letter. Edit. A word. Edit 2. People are prying and I don't want to give too much info. But this took place in North Carolina. I am aware that title changes a public record. But I was surprised by the speed. The small town I live in can take up to two months to update their online public databases. Clearly there are ways to get the info I was not aware of. Mattress stores that have a find it anywhere else for cheaper. You get your money back. Deal contract with the manufacturer to make the exact same model of bed. But with a model name specific to that store. So nobody can ever cash in on that deal. I know a guy who does pest control who specializes in raccoon removal. He takes the raccoons from one house in one neighborhood. Then takes and releases it in another neighborhood then waits for the people there to reach out to him to remove the raccoon from their home. Buying a car from a buy here. Pay here dealership. You put $500 or $1000 down they say you are approved and you drive the car home. Two days later the dealership calls and says that they couldn't get you financed at the down payment and interest rate so we need an additional $2500 down and your interest rate doubles. If you don't have the extra money they take the car and your original down payment. This is an AZ. When finding a home for your elderly parents. Set up an appointment but come in a few minutes early and say, don't ask, if you can walk around for a quick look. The receptionist likely won't refuse you. And the salesperson won't be ready for you. These places like to show you only the stuff they want you to see when being led around by a salesperson. Chat with a resident or a staff member. They'll be the most honest with you. Offering insurance on anything that does not have the potential to be financially debilitating. Want to insure your DVD rental? Fuck off. The closing down sale in the shop that never closes down. It's just in closing down sale mode continuously. I'm amazed shops are allowed to get away with this. The 3 tiered pricing approach. Especially for things like roofing or basement waterproofing. The contractor starts with a ridiculously high priced quote for way more stuff than you asked for. Steps down to a more moderate quote of what you wanted with a few bells and whistles. Then the third quote is for what you requested. This gives you the illusion of choice and reduces sticker shock because although your requested absolute minimum service is really expensive. It's only half the cost of their recommended repairs. In high-end IT. Vendors will often go dark in the months before a service contract renewal or infrastructure refresh is needed. The idea behind this is that the customer is forced to come to them. Or they can come to the customer with little enough time to complete the refresh that they are either forced to make a purchase on bad footing for price negotiations or renew service agreements for an additional year at a higher rate while migrating to new gear. Yelp is an extortion ring. An older fellow I know had a bodega and he'd put a can of cream corn on the counter by the register. This was some time ago so the van had a price tag of $17. He sold that can of cream corn to everyone who bought anything there. If they realized they were paying too much he'd just say he thought that was their can of corn. Most people didn't notice though and he sold that same can of cream corn maybe 20 times a day. Whole wheat breads. Double check the ingredients list. If bleached flour is listed at all. Put it the fuck back. Sara Lee is notorious for this. Most of their whole wheat products are actually just molasses make the bread darker. Food die. We have many more clients interested in this limited offer. If you're buying a used car, or any car for that matter, the check engine light should temporarily come on when you start the vehicle. If it doesn't, the dash has been tampered with to mask a potential issue. My elementary school would host a fun day every year. Where there were booths, games, activities, etc. They'd get the kids to help out with various small tasks too. One year when I was about 9 my task was to help sell the little potted geraniums. 
$0.25 each. Well. No one was buying any of them. So I had a brilliant idea. I made a new sign that said buy one for one dollar. Get three free. Those little geraniums sold like hotcakes after that. I was so proud of myself I told the principal. He did not approve. Though he let me do it anyway. It's a wonder I didn't turn into a little Gordon Gecko. Probably only the boneritis kept it in check. Not sure if this fits. But if you are offered a raise for taking on new responsibilities. Get it in writing. Just learn that the hard way. When moving out of a rental apartment house make sure to take lots of pictures and ask the owner landlord to do a walkthrough with you. Video the walkthrough. That way if they do not give you all your deposit back you have something to take to court versus a he said he said which you generally lose. When you turn in cable internet equipment make sure to get a full receipt showing what they took in on the date it was received. Scan this and email to a couple different email accounts. Comcast and others are bad about losing the equipment a couple years later. After you forget. And then billing you. Sire. Every month and every 4 weeks sound similar. But are different. Paying every month gets you 12 payments. Every 4 weeks gets you 13. Edit. Thanks for top comment. Just something my dad taught me when I first got a debit card. Real estate gurus who sell their courses online in downloadable digital format and say that we must buy now since they only have a few courses remaining and when they're gone. They're gone. How the fuck do they run out of digital? Downloadable courses? Do their computers run out of binary ones and zeros after so many downloads? Sounds stupid but people fall for this ploy regularly. Watch the ever-changing price of pre-packaged food goods at most grocery stores. One day the price may seem to go down. But if you check the weight. It has also gone down. Snack foods do this constantly. I like buying these breaded frozen chicken breast fillets at my local grocery store. Been buying them for a long time. They were $11.99 CDN for 908 grams. 2 LBS. Last week they were $11.99 CDN. For 750 grams, 1.65 LBS or 1 pound. 10 OZS. That product just went up 21% in price. Edit. As you preparing to code pointed out. It's a 27% price increase. Not 21%. Even worse. A locksmith I knew would rookie locks using old. Worn down pins. Which cause the locks to stop working prematurely without the pins being crisp. Eventually the lock jams or the key quits working. He would then await the inevitable call to replace them. Rookie them with good pins. And be good to go. You could make an extra $65 a customer this way. We never did. I'm certified as a master locksmith. NLA and a lower, but we repaired a lot of locks this charlatan fixed. We complained to the NLA and a lower and got his bond status revoked. If you get a lock repaired and it doesn't feel as crisp as a new zipper when you put in the key that first time, they may have pulled this trick. Anyone who tells you that money is about to collapse and be useless and you need an investment in gold to protect yourself, but are then willing to sell you some of their precious and limited gold reserves for some of your soon to be worthless paper money, should not be listened to. I work with a lot of different body shops. And in my area the big thing to do is to enhance the damage to customers' cars. I don't mean they try and negotiate harder. I mean they actively create more damage to previously undamaged panels. Usually in ways that don't affect the function and are hidden to the customer. In order to get the insurance company to pay them more money. In my area. While not every shop does this. I would say the honest ones are the minority. And it screws the customer over in the long run. The shop might promise that they will save you your deductible. But in the end you end up with a car that has unrepaired damage or you have to pay out of pocket if the insurance company catches the shop enhancing. And the sad thing is there is almost no way to know which shops do this when you pick a shop. If thou art in Sweden and want to start a company. Don't pay for anything. It's totally free via Verksamt say and Skatterverkets and anyone that tries to make you pay for handling paperwork or something to do with the startup administration is probably a scam. This happened to my friend that lost about 2000 kr. Edit. Spelling. 
Dish Network's door-to-door salesman will tell you that it's fine to use your parents' name and social security number for your account if your credit prevents you from getting service. This is not okay. It's identity theft. Pitfalls in buying used sport tuner cars are many. But the most crooked is swapping bad engines and parts into a nice body car. Some sellers will spend money on a pristine used car. Sell the high-end parts for a profit and swap a junk motor into the car. Always check matching VIN numbers from the head. Manifold and on the car itself. If they don't match. Buy at your own risk. I was a waitress at a family owned restaurant that paid me $0.10 more than the minimum wage. They were able to require me to turn over all tips that I never saw again because they paid me over minimum wage. I think this is technically legal. But sleazy nonetheless. I made really great tips and it was hard turning the money over. It's also pretty deceptive to the customer. Who thinks their money is going to the wait staff? Not the restaurant. The higher priced items like prime rib and seafood is typically at the end of the buffet line and cheaper more filling options like bread and mashed potatoes are at the front. They hope you fill up your plate space stomach space by the time you get to the high ticket items. Fake reviews. I worked for a startup that had a sleazy CEO and got most. If not all. Of their business by fake Yelp. Google. Glassdoor and other review sites in our industry. CEO was a compulsive liar and had no morals. Side note. I left the company and shit went straight downhill as it was a house of cards anyway and I had a key position. The CEO ended up calling his business partner of 3 years and telling him that all the money was gone and he is leaving the country forever. Full stop. Full stop. Then didn't leave. He still has the company open with a much smaller staff and can only imagine what he is saying to keep it afloat. Ok done with the rant. It is easy to see fake reviews now since they are usually a bit more eccentric and polished and I have lost all faith in them. A local lawn maintenance business takes advantage of unsuspecting customers in three ways. On monthly bills. They double the state tax, instead of being, say, 6%. It'll actually be 12%. If you check the math. Without discussing it with homeowners. They charge double for double cuts when the grass is a little taller in areas than usual. So. If you had agreed to pay $50 per mowing. The monthly bill says $100 for each visit. They never ask, they just do it and charge double, in most cases. It's just a small patch of the yard that has taller grass. Not the entire thing. They're supposed to mow once per week. But without telling customers first. They start mowing every 5 days, which means they get to charge for more mowing visits per month than necessary. I kept getting phone calls for a timeshare company. I agreed to come out on my day off to claim my prize. I walked around with this sales guy that kept trying to hard sell me on the buying in aspect of it. At the end they sat me down at the table and tried to get me to give up $8500 of my cash. I told him no. He came back and dropped it to $6k. I said no again. He went off and talked to his manager and he came back with a fantastic one time deal of $4500 and I said no again. He finally asked me why I came if I wasn't remotely interested and I explained that his company kept calling me to get my bus in this seat and even though I told the phone person I wasn't interested in a timeshare that they kept calling so if they were going to waste my time then I decided to waste his. I have never gotten a phone call from them again. Sometimes it's worth some of your time to piss them off to get taken off the list. I worked at a Nissan dealership as a car salesman and it was made abundantly clear to us that all of the advertised prices and sticker prices were 100% bullshit. I even remember one of the managers telling us a new commercial went out and referred to it as a bunch of lies that are going to get people in the door. Edit. I should add something a few people mentioned and I left out. Technically that price is real but it's for a vehicle with literally zero add-ons. Meaning no power steering. No power seats windows. Nothing but the most basic of basic car packages and basically non-existent because no one would pay money for that travesty of a car. If you're buying a used car and it's parked over a puddle, they don't want you to look underneath. Some stores increase the price of a product and then put it on sale by a percentage of the fake higher price. Rental companies. Specifically for vacation. 
they will say a certain condo house is available on their website but then when you call, they'll say it is now unavailable or just got booked very recently. Then they'll try and show you a different place which is like $50 more a night. Banking on the desperation of the tourists to just say fuck it and rent it. I waited tables in a restaurant and one time I decided to pour a cup of soup into an empty bowl. A bowl of soup costs a good bit more than a cup of soup at the restaurant. The cup filled up the bowl to the top. Be careful if your friend from high school messages you out of the blue on Facebook. They have something to sell you or some pyramid scheme they want you to join. Edit. Might edit too. Multi-level marketing companies ruin tarnish the relationships between family and friends of people that work for them. I worked for a company that sold items for babies and expecting mothers. They had a return and repair policy seems okay at first but then as an employee you realize what you're in fact doing is sending a 300 pound push chair back to the manufacturer for 3-4 weeks. The wording was draconian what people assumed was that they had 28 days to return their item. When in fact it meant that they could go up to 28 days without a push chair. They wouldn't let us offer refunds while the original was being repaired. So we had devastated mums crying on the phone all the time. And they almost always ended up forking out another 300 pounds for a new push chair. It was a pretty fucking soul destroying job and a really fucking dirty business practice especially when the clientele was pregnant women. Made from all with 100% something. Just because something is made with 100% of something doesn't mean that the thing itself is 100% that thing. Gaslighting. People in the corporate world will deny and make stuff up. Save everything. Write emails you don't have to just so there is a record of your actions. Be meticulous in covering your ass so when the day comes that they try to inevitably throw you under the bus for their own mistakes. You can say yeah. But on this date we communicated this. When dealing with a salesperson, they will wait for a third hard no before ending their sales pitch. Mechanics and other car servicing places will often put many additional tasks replacements on your bill or imply that you should do things immediately. While many of their recommendations are things to keep in mind. Often the tasks they are talking about are not immediately necessary and can be put off for a while before there is an issue. This in no means is me saying that you shouldn't regularly take your car for servicing. When I worked at H&M we used to do some sneaky stuff with setting up the mannequins displays. Whenever we had a supply of shirts that were really ugly. And weren't selling well. We'd put the ugly item on the mannequin. And it would sell out very quickly. This isn't necessarily the dirtiest trick. But it worked pretty well for pushing really ugly clothes. If someone starts trying to trade away all their sheep because they have so much of it while they've been sitting on a development card for half the game. Do not trade. Some companies on Amazon will offer to refund your purchase of their item on PayPal if you give them a good review. That way it still looks like a verified purchase through Amazon. Tell people the ice cream machine is broken past 10pm. No one is going to come inside and check. When my grandmother was in the hospital, her landscaper and handyman both contacted me to tell me she hadn't paid them and they'd been trying to to reach her and on and on. I'd already paid both bills from her account and when I questioned them, they remembered real quick. I'm a financial advisor. And one of the things I do is get my rivals drunk in front of company executives. My mobile company offered me my same plan for something like $8 cheaper per month. I had asked if there were going to be any changes other than the price and they said no. It turns out overage charges went from $10 gigabyte to $15 100 megabytes. Bastards. Drivers of the popular new taxi service, starts with you, will stall and hope that you cancel the ride. And they get the easy $5. This happened to me last week near Lax. Two drivers tried this. And I made the third guy admit to me that this is happening. One of them texted saying my car broke down. You need to cancel the trip. Sure. Pow. Your 2015 BMW just broke down. The third guy said it is easier for them to get you to cancel than to slug through LA traffic. If you wait it out in a standoff. They will eventually cancel, but you will be late for your meeting. Like I was. Used to work for a self-storage facility where the first month's rent is $1. 
but that doesn't include the admin fee to do the paperwork or the not included lock that you could only get from us and only works at that facility. For UK people I'm sure a lot of you have had people at your door offering you a free loft insulation top up usually calling themselves loft surveyors. See. It's true that for a while, maybe still, you could get a top up free if you were on child tax credits or have someone over 70 living in the home and the insulation was below the joists. Thing is. When I used to do this we 90% of the time forgot to mention it and people were footed with a bill once the roof people turned up. The average group memory is around 6 months. An outsource I worked for knew this. And so would ramp up the elite engineers right after signing a new contract. In the honeymoon period to get the project work pipeline going. And 6 months before renewal. Would do the same. And in the interim. Deliver a mediocre just enough to meet SLA service. Because it literally didn't matter. As long as everything appears to be getting better the 6 months before renewal that counts much more in your favor than offering utterly stellar service the whole contract span. This also applies to politics. And why there is an election season and you'll see signs of good news 6 months before an election starts to come along. The best sellers book lists are not actually based on the number of books sold to consumers. They are based on the number of books sold by the distributor. So if someone like. Bill O'Reilly. Wanted to claim he had the best selling book in America. His publisher could use a third party clearing house to order a million copies of the book at a highly discounted rate. Like. 0.50 cents a book. The clearing house can then turn around and sell those books to books a million. Barnes and Noble. Etc. At a highly discounted rate. Which is why you see certain authors, like Bill O'Reilly, always in the bargain bin. But even if nobody bought those books at the store level, the distributor can still report that 1 million copies of the book have been sold. It's not dirty as it's legal but there is a reason that stores ask you to donate some amount to a charity or fund. They can use your donation to help them get a tax write-off. Not sure if they still do it. But if you call Comcast after 4 p.m. CST to cancel service, they'd put you on hold and leave you there until they closed at 5. Getting solar panels on your house by lease or power purchase agreement is a horrible deal for a homeowner. You save a small amount on your bill, but are tied to the agreement for 20 plus years while the company that actually owns them retains all of the tax benefits. Edit. It's not free you pay for the power the system produces. Albeit usually at a lower rate. However. The savings are just as good with many solar oriented loans that require no money up front in which the homeowner retains the 30% federal and any state tax incentives. Edit 2. Solar panels have no moving parts. The maintenance portion of a PPA is virtually negligible as the equipment will be warranted as is the workmanship if you just buy it. I will concede that it doesn't make sense to buy if you don't have a tax liability. Jacking Google Business Pages Basically if a Google business listing isn't claimed and controlled by a company, a competing company can weasel their way in and direct people to their business by, say, changing the phone number. There was an article recently about how drug counselors in the Philadelphia area had it happen to them. Their listing phone number was changed to an 800 number, which directed callers to an inpatient rehab facility in Florida. It was discovered when one of these counselors started noticing his patients suddenly not showing up. He called one of them and found out he was at this facility in Florida. Car dealerships that tell you your financing numbers and say you're approved. Then let you drive your car for a week so you can fall in love with it. And then break the news to you that your loan didn't actually go through based on unforeseen circumstances and it will have a bit higher interest rate than they originally thought. I've seen them pull this shit multiple times. Usually on younger adults or first time buyers. When it happened to me I took the truck and keys back in and dropped them on the table. Made them rip up my check and then started walking home. After they realized I wasn't bluffing a salesperson raced to catch up with me in their car. Drove me back to the dealership and they cut the price of the truck down to match the original quoted payments. The freebooting Facebook is doing. Destin's video on smarter every day. Kurz Jasak's video on the topic. Multi-level marketing. They are almost certainly pyramid schemes. The top guy recruits 5 people. 
those five then each get five people and so on and so on. The only way to make money is to have people underneath you. List of large multi-level marketing groups. Five links. ANC Incorporated. Advocare. Agle Enterprises. Ambit Energy. Amsoil. Amway. Amway Global. Oven Products. Beachbody. Bio Performance. Discovery Toys. Doterra. Forever Living Products. Free Life. Fuel Freedom International. Fund American. Herbalife. Isagenix International. Juice Plus. Cleanies. Legal Shield. Life Vantage. The Long Budget Company and Lou Laro. Walter Marketing Consultants and anyone who represents Consolation Energy or Direct Energy Level. Full list here edit. Added a few MLMs. If you are going to ask for add-ons with purchasing a vehicle. Such as a hitch receiver. Check Amazon for part prices and YouTube for installation difficulty. I had a salesman consult the shop to see how much this would cost for a grand caravan. He said it was going to be just over a thousand dollars after my purchase of the vehicle. Well I didn't purchase from him. But months later installed one myself in less than an hour. In part due to the vehicle containing bolts already installed in the frame for a receiver. The name brand receiver only cost me a hundred dollars. They were going to charge me $900 an hour for labor. If someone from Microsoft calls you saying they are getting an alert that you have a virus. Tell them to go fuck off. MS will never cold call you for an issue like that. Placing the most profitable items at our level, worst deal for you, and the best value for money items in hard to reach places. Making you walk past all the items in the store due to design. For example. Ikea. Edit. This isn't dirty in terms of legality but in terms of sneaky tricks that aim to get more money from you. Buying tickets online and being charged a convenience fee for the privilege of buying it online. In France it's hard to fire or lay off people. So when big companies need to clean house a bit. They move the office to a new location quite distant from the current one. In the process they reduce the office size from 50,000 seats to 30,000 because they've estimated that amount of people will resign rather than endure a 4 hours commute. But officially totally you still have your job if you want. We are not laying you off. But I need you in the office every day. Or you could resign if you don't like the new location. Nestle did that and apparently it's fairly common now for multinationals around Paris. If you want to get nothing in return, you can like and join my discord, there is a link in the description.